Hey everyone, we hope you're well. In this video, we're sharing how we spent three days in Mallorca, Spain. This was an unplanned trip. We decided to go because it was an opportunity to meet a dear friend of ours we haven't met in a decade. So even though Mallorca is said to be the most beautiful island in the Mediterranean, we didn't really have much expectation beyond spending some quality time with our friends. Still, here's a glimpse of what we saw and did, if you'd like to know. Hello, good morning. We're at the airport in Sevilla, waiting for our flight to Palma de Mallorca. We're a bit early, so we're just enjoying a cup of coffee to wake us up because we left at about, what, 6? Yes. Well, in the morning. See you in Mallorca. We reached Mallorca at about 10 a.m. We dropped our bags at our Airbnb and had a quick breakfast of coffee and ensaimada, a traditional Mallorcan coil-shaped pastry served with powdered sugar. We then took a walk around the city, which was quite lively, probably because it was the weekend. We chanced upon a mass at a local church. largest of the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean Sea, Mallorca boasts more than 300 sunny days in a year. And yet, it rained every day we were there, except for one day. Hmm. After a while, we reached the waterfront and saw the cathedral, Basilica de Santa Maria de Mallorca. It sits atop the former citadel of the city, next to the royal palace of La Almudaina, and overlooks the Mediterranean Sea. The famous Catalan architect Antoni Gaudi had a hand in this, but left the project unfinished in 1914. From here, we took another road and walked back to the city center. morning flight left us rather tired, so we checked into our Airbnb for a quick afternoon rest. There was an Arsenal match, so guess what Arnold was doing? In the evening, our friends arrived from Berlin, and we went out for dinner at Cellar Sa Bremsa, a restaurant in the city that's been serving traditional Mallorcan cooking since 1958. We were clearly quite hungry, because I forgot to take any footage of the food, and only remember to take these, the desserts we ordered. Our friends were also tired from their travel, so we had an early night. The next morning, we started the day with breakfast at Can Juan de Saigo, a cafe that's been around since the year 1700, practically the oldest in town. We had the apple and custard and saimada this time, and liked it better than the plain sugary one we had before. As for our plan for the day, our friend Francesco had booked us on a small group walking tour to discover the center of Palma and its history. We started in front of the Basilica of San Miguel, where the first mass was celebrated in Palma after the reconquest. We learned about the story of how a bat took an arrow meant for the king and became the heraldic animal of the city. We visited the Basilica of St. Francis, where Mallorca's famous philosopher, poet, and theologian Ramon Yul was buried, walked to the Jewish quarter, the monastery of Santa Ana, where we could buy cookies from cloistered nuns, learned about the miraculous light phenomenon involving the rose windows of the cathedral, 
where on two days every year, the sun shines through the giant eastern window and create a reflection right below its western counterpart, forming a colorful figure 8. Not a coincidence, but an intended outcome of a genius mathematical calculation hundreds of years ago. How a live crocodile was found in the sewers of medieval Mallorca, and many more interesting anecdotes. We'd highly recommend this walking tour with Charlotte if you ever find yourself in Mallorca. We'll leave the link down below. At the end of the tour, our group enjoyed some drinks and lunch together. One of the great perks of these small group tours is how we get to meet new people and make new friends. It's a small world. It'd be great to run into one another again in our future travels. After saying bye to our new friends, we circled back to the waterfront and visited the royal palace. Like so many other palaces in southern Spain, it's a modification of the Muslim Alcazar. Visitors can wander through its numerous rooms, decorated with period pieces and a range of tapestries. This palace was still in use by the Spanish king, by the way, when he's in Mallorca. The courtyard has a white marble lion, preserved from its Muslim past. This beautiful pink marble portal leads to the chapel of Saint Anne, a peaceful little chapel in the palace complex. Although the exterior of the building has been changed on numerous occasions, the interior of the chapel has remained intact since its construction in the 14th century. This is the Queen's study. Surprisingly functional, not just for show. I actually find the palace quite homey and beautiful in its simplicity not so lavishly decorated as other palaces we've been to. This here is the king's study. Oh, and we happened to go on a day when citizens of EU and South American countries could get in for free. It didn't affect us, but our friends didn't need to pay admission. As you can see, the day was grey and gloomy, with the occasional light rain. It didn't dampen our mood though. The sea used to come up to here, but they pushed it out, reclaimed the land, then upon realizing that the cathedral was losing its beautiful reflection on the water, created this man-made pool to bring it back. In the evening, our friend Francesco very kindly cooked us a delicious spaghetti and matriciana at the apartment. After winding down for the night, we went to bed full and happy. Day 2 started with quite a heavy brunch at this little cafe that looked like Isabella from Encanto did the exterior design. It was raining again, so we visited a contemporary art museum in the city. Admittedly, we're not artsy people, and contemporary art is always a bit of hit and miss for us. We often don't get them. Why is this art? What are the artists trying to say? If you enjoy contemporary art, you should check this place out. It's free to enter, and you can complete the visit in 1-2 to two hours.
As the rain eased, we walked to Mallorca shopping street, Paseig des Born, flanked by two sphinxes on either side, and the king's garden below the palace. We also tried to venture further to the seafront, but the wind was just too strong. Afternoon, we walked to the Jewish quarter and checked out an old Arab bathhouse. The bathhouse configuration follows the old Roman bathhouse, where you have different rooms to regulate the temperature. Too bad it's no longer functional. I would love to have a warm soak, especially on cold days like these. We parted ways with our friends for dinner as they were celebrating their anniversary. Arnold and I chilled at a local bar and we found that we really like the ambience. It's cozy, a bit far from the city center, and everyone here seemed to know each other except us. We also tried Yongget, a local sandwich filled with various tasty ingredients. In our case, Sobrasada, a spread made of paprika spiced raw cured pork, an interesting delicacy. a pastry shop San Cristo and took a bus to visit two of the beautiful mountain towns outside of Palma. This was the only sunny day in our visit. Look at that blue sky! Our first stop was Soye, a town in the northwest of Mallorca that became wealthy and famous for the valley's abundant citrus groves. Here we are in the main square. Plaza de la Constitution. It is the heart of Soye, lined with bars, restaurants, cafes, and dominated by the San Bartomeu Church. An old wooden tram linking the town and the port makes its way regularly through this splendid square. This was a great place to relax and enjoy the sun, while having some local orange juice, of course. Walking around the town was really pleasant too. We admired the charming alleys and traditional stone houses. afternoon, we hopped back onto the bus and made our way to another town, Valdemosa. The scenery on the way was lovely, but I did get a bit of motion sickness from the winding mountain roads. This next town, Valdemosa, became famous because the pianist Frédéric Chopin and the French writer Georges Sand stayed for a few months there during the winter of 1838 and 39, hoping it would improve Chopin's tuberculosis. It didn't. The winter was hard and they didn't have the best of stay, but the resulting book, A Winter in Mallorca, became a bestseller. well after lunch hours, so it took a while to find a place to eat, but finally settled at La Posada and had a great meal. We 
wanted to do more walking around afterwards, but the weather was too cold and windy, so we ducked into a cafe instead for warm drinks. It was a small taste of what Chopin and Sen went through in the winter, I'm sure. We took the same bus to get back to Palma, and that was the end of our three days in Mallorca. We flew to Barcelona the next morning. It was too short a stay, but we were very grateful for the opportunity to meet and spend time with our friends. If we have another chance to visit Mallorca, we'd love to spend more time in these mountain towns, go for hikes along the Tramontana mountain range, and check out the beautiful beaches in the summer. So till then, Mallorca!